There are a ton of gems in Home Assistant HACS or hacks. Today we'll be looking again at a couple of them. We'll start in a couple of seconds. First two custom components that we'll be looking at today are related to batteries. One is this custom card and the other is battery notes, which I also featured in one other video, but I just briefly jumped through it. And also there were some changes between that last video and this one. So let's start with battery notes. In Hex, go to Integrations, click on Explore and Download Repositories and type Battery for Battery Notes. Click on download. At the time of the recording, the latest version is version 1.1.9. And once again, download. As always, if you do like this integration, don't forget to give the author a star to say thanks. But we still need to do one additional thing. If we go to the documentation, we will see that we have to add this line here to our configuration YAML file and then restart our home assistant. Let's go to File Editor or Visual Studio Code or Studio Code Server, whatever you are using to edit your configuration YAML file. Paste the text, it's battery underscore notes. Go to Developer Tools, Restart Home Assistant. And that should be it. The big difference between the version I recorded a couple of days or a couple of weeks ago and this one is that this one now has a database of devices with attributes battery types. But if the battery is missing, the battery type, you can still edit manually. Also because of those changes, there are more frequent updates to this integration. After your home assistant has restarted, check notifications because you probably received something like this, new device discovered, and that may be because of the battery notes. Click check it out. And in my case, I have a bunch of new devices. These are all devices that have been detected by battery notes as devices that have batteries and that battery notes knows what type of battery goes inside. For example, Zeta switch, this is a Xiaomi switch. If I click on configure, it says the battery is CR2032. Submit. Then those here, these are Tado devices, three AAA batteries. Then we have Mi Body Scale, which is a Bluetooth device, four AAA batteries. We have Mose Valve, two AA batteries. Then, for example, this IKEA button, CR2032, SwitchBot Bot, CR2, Cube, CR2450, etc. I will not be adding all of the devices. Now, if we go to the integrations page and look at the batteries, here we have all the batteries that have been successfully added. For example, this one here features AA battery, two AA batteries, CR2 battery, and more. In the future, this custom component will receive one additional improvement, and that will be the date tracker. It will allow you to set the date when the battery was replaced. So you can also track how long do the batteries last in that specific device. But that's not all. For example, for the devices that have internal or rechargeable batteries, you can specify that the battery is rechargeable. Also, for some devices that have irreplaceable battery, the battery that you cannot replace, you can also use that custom note. And that way you will know what device needs replacement, what battery needs recharging, or what battery needs replacement. And then you can once again hook it up with a to-do list or your shopping list to create a list of batteries that you need to purchase. Okay, now we've sorted that part, but what, for example, if you want to display the status of the battery, state of the battery, the percentage of the battery charge. Also, for some of the devices, you can also track if the battery is being recharged or not. For example, here, my Pixel Watch is currently being recharged. It is at 100%, but it's still stuck on the charger. Well, you can do this with this custom integration, once again from Hex. Go to Hex, Frontend, click on Plus to explore and download repositories. And we'll be using this battery state card or entity row. There are a lot of options for this card and I will go just through basic ones. For example, this is something similar how my screen looks. But there are more complex things that you can do. If we scroll down, you can see that you can sort them by the battery percentage, change the color depending on the state of the battery. You can use it without color. You can have sorted and collapsible views. 
you can have this card that has, let's call it like that, collapsible view, but with preview. For example, we have three batteries that are targeted as a door sensor group with minimum battery level of 87%. And yes, by the way, you can create a group of batteries. For example, you can group them by the device type, door window sensors, temperature sensors, or you can group them in a room. For example, living room, and then have all devices with batteries there. Of course, for the groups, you will have to do that manually. I've already shown you how the charging indicators look. You can filter them, you can bulk rename them, you can display secondary information, you can add tap action, or you can use the card for something completely different. For example, here you can present the state of the Wi-Fi, the quality of the signal. But as I said, we'll be looking at the basic implementation, something that I'm using in my own system. Let's click on download. At the time of the recording, the latest version is version 3.0.1. Click on download. Since this is a front-end component, we will not need to restart our home assistant. We will just need to press reload. And once again, if you do like this component, don't forget to give it a star inside the GitHub repository to say thanks to the author. After the component has been installed, of course, we need to add it to our UI. Click on Add Card, type in Battery, and click on Battery State Card. Since there is no UI editor, I will be pasting here the code, example code that I copied from the repository itself. Now we just need to replace the sensor name to match our sensor names. For example, balcony battery, loggia battery, living room motion battery. And as you can see, you can also customize the name. If I would remove this line here, we see that the sensor name is living room motion battery. If I add name, we can rename it to living room motion battery state. And click save. This is the simplest way on how you can add or simplest way how you can visualize your batteries. Yes, it will take some time to customize the card, but there are also ways to automate things. For example, this is the example also from the documentation. Here you can see the collapsible list. I can replace the default eight number and add a lower quantity of batteries to be visible or higher quantities of battery to be visible. And if we expand the list, you should now be able to see the list of all of the batteries that you have in your setup and they will be sorted based on the state. These are the off, not working, unavailable is also not working, maybe the battery died, maybe it didn't update, unknown, same here. And then we have batteries ranging from 1% all the way up to fully charged or 100%. As I've said, this card is very powerful and it will allow you to do a lot of customizations. So I really do hope that you will be using this card in future in your own setup. But now let's look at one very, very simple integration. This was a hint from one of the viewers. Thank you. If we go to HACS, Integrations, Explore, and type Inverse, we have custom component that allows you to inverse the state of the switch. Sometimes you have a switch that has opposite state. For example, it says that something is on when it's actually off or it needs to do something and it's actually in the reverse state. If you want to do that manually, you would have to create template, but not with this integration here. If we click on download, latest version at the time of the recording is version 1.1 download and restart our home assistant and after restart if we go to integrations helpers click on create helper scroll down to inverse switch let's for example add washing machine switch and the washing machine is currently in the on state this machine is all the time in the on state because we control it manually let's add it here submit finish at the bottom of the list, we can see that we now have the washing machine helper in the state off. Well, actually our machine is still in the state on. So if you need to reverse the state of any switch, you can do this with this inverse integration. And for the last integration today, we have to go to integrations and search for something called thermal comfort. Let's install it. Thermal Comfort component allows you to see a lot of additional data that is related to the outside temperature. Let's click on Download. At the time of the recording, the latest version is 2.2.0. Download. 
and we will have to restart our Home Assistant. But there is also one additional thing that we can, but this is not mandatory install, to have a better look of this component. Let's go back, let's go to Frontend, let's click on Explore, once again search for Thermal and download Thermal Comfort icons. As I said, this is not mandatory, this is just a custom pack for Thermal Comfort integration or custom component. Click on Download and Download. Of course, front-end components do not require restart, we just have to reload Home Assistant, but since we also installed the new integration, let's go to Developer Tools and press on Restart. While Home Assistant is restarting, let's look at the documentation for the Thermal Comfort. Thermal Comfort allows you to see numerical indicators, but also bio or perception indicators. For example, dew point, frost point, absolute humidity, moist air, but also feeling or bias indicators. For example, does it feel okay, doesn't feel okay, is it too wet, too cold, things like that. You get a lot more data from just a couple of sensors. Absolute humidity, dew point, frost point, frost risk, heat index, humid index or humidity index, and more. There are a lot of ways on how you can integrate inside Home Assistant. You can do it either through the YAML or through the UI. We'll be going through the UI, because a lot of people, especially once started with Home Assistant, prefer UI. Go to Integrations, click on Add Integration, type Thermal, select Thermal Comfort, and then select the Temperature Sensor, Outside Temperature Sensor and Outside Humidity Sensor. Balcony, Temperature and Balcony, Humidity. If the sensor doesn't automatically update both stairs, you can enable polling to use this functionality and to get more accurate results. Polling interval is 30 seconds, and if you installed custom icons pack, you can tick this box here. Here you have a list of all the new sensors that will be created. You can of course untick some of them if you do not want to see them in your instance. Click on Submit. Select an area, balcony for me, and finish. After the data from the sensor is updated, you will receive a lot more information from just two sensors, temperature and humidity, outside temperature and humidity. You will have absolute humidity, dew point, frost point, heat index, and much more. Every time I see a component like this that expands on the data by using scientific models or creativity of a developer, I am really left speechless. And don't forget, if you do like this component or any component from this video, go to the GitHub repository and give author a star. It's a nice way of saying thanks to the author, but also to other people that were helping out with the development of each of those components. If you were looking for a way to invert the state of the switch, if you wanted to get more information from your outdoor temperature humidity sensors, or if you're looking for a way on how to display the state of the battery, we've covered that in today's video. If you yourself find any HACS or HEX integration or front-end component that you liked and that you want to feature in one of my future videos, don't forget to leave me a comment down in a comment section below, or you can go to my Twitter page or the Discord server and leave comment and link there. Oh, and please note, as for the outdoor sensors, I know that a lot of people have been asking for the best sensor that you can use on the outside. For the last three years, I'm using simple Akara indoor temperature humidity sensor. I've printed the case, the Stevenson or whatever it is called, the case that allows the air to flow inside the sensor, but it protects it from the direct sunlight and also rain. So you do not have to go wild or crazy by purchasing some 100, 200, 1000 or 1 million dollar sensors. You can go for a cheap, normal Tuya or Akara sensors. They were great. And this is it for this video. Before I end up the video, I would like to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched like, subscribed, commented or shared my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the video, you can do so by either clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month, going to my merchandise store and getting something there, or sending me super thanks. And as always, 
I will be super thankful for that. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.